What's up, friends and family of YouTube? It's Pasta Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying out my camera so you guys can see me. Anyway, got myself this knife. Not what it's about, but. Masota! Oh, Japan! So I figured I'd try it opening up a box from China. Two arthritis. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Look at that. Ooh. Look at that. That's nice. Wow, nice case. No, I'm not sponsored. I actually bought these. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's shut. Oh, man. Anyway, I'm going to open up this box. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this guitar. There are no videos on YouTube about it. As of the time of making this video. But, the company itself has been around for, I want to say, 10, 12, 15 years, somewhere like that. They used to build kits. And, um, I was talking to one of the representatives of the co company. This is a Pharrell, by the way. And I was telling them what I did. And uh, told them, I said, well, I'm not looking to get it for free. I said, but I'd like to try it. And I says, and, you know, I like Firefly guitars and, you know, inexpensive guitars that have good quality. That people could mod, and, you know, trick out, and make their own. And I explained what I pay, and, you know. Things of that sort. And he said, oh, well, uh, I'll match the price then. So he matched the price on one of my Fireflies. And I told him I'd try it out and give him an honest review on his guitar. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, look, I mean, I ain't lying to you. This, this box looks a little beat up. I mean, you can see the whole size. I mean, it's sliced and diced on the side. There's a big bang there. But, I don't know if uh, Customs was in this or not. So, we're going to see. Ooh, baby, is that knife sharp? Wow. That is one sharp knife. Yowza. Wow. It looks like they put a little bit of cardboard around it. We'll see. And Look at that. They even got my name on it. You guys can see that. The name on it. That's nice. So, anyway, I told them what I do. I, you know, did the videos on YouTube and there you go. I said, Bob, I want you to send me a guitar like you're going to send to everybody else. I said, that's important. I said, because they're going to expect that quality. Uh, and that assurance from me when uh, when or if they decide to buy one I don't know what the hell. oh there it is so I don't know if you guys can see what's going on or not I think you can yeah you guys can see bring it up a little bit more so you can see so Let's open her up and see what she's all about. And I tell them, I said, you know, the market today, I said, it's a very competitive market. I said, and if you're going to build quality guitars, that's one thing. But it's your price point because there's so many good guitars today, like Firefly, they're making excellent guitars for the money. I mean, you can't, you can't beat it with a stick. I mean, even Epiphone, 
which I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love Gibsons. And, I, mean, I just love guitars in general. I think they're at or better than the Epiphone. As far as the way that they look, the construction of the Firefly, I mean, they're just really good. I said, so, you know, if you want me to do a review, I will for you. I said, but I'm going to be honest, and I'm paying for it, so, he's like, yep, I'll subscribe to the channel, and, uh, I want you to get my fire. Okay. Wow. It's going to turn into a mess. Anyway, so, here we go. Making a mess in the basement. Yeah, let's go. I don't even know. <laughs> I think I cut it on the wrong act. Look at this. I'm a mess. Well, Maybe I cut it in the wrong section. Who knows? I don't know. I probably didn't cut it where it was supposed to be. Let me look. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know. Well. Man, this is if you buy one because it is secure for sure. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to get the back of point to clean around after this one. Holy smoke. Yowza. Look at this. It's not, uh, well that's one thing you better take into consideration if you're buying one of these. Or cut it up. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. Oh, no, I missed it. What a dummy. Anyway, I guess you're supposed to be a little low, so it's my bad. It's not on them. It's on me. So, anyway, I have uh, successfully messed up open the box. <laughs> Do not blame the company for that. Definitely blame Reverend Bob for making a mess. All right. Now, I could put it on my bench, but I suppose it's not necessary. And you're seeing it same time I'm seeing. So, it's uh, an LP stylish guitar. Stylish. I'm going to say it like that. But, it has some appointments that I see. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Like the Wolf guitar. I don't know if you ever heard of Wolf guitars. Wow, that's nice. Outside of me cutting the package in the wrong spot and getting stuff all over the place like an idiot. Wow! That's nice! Take a look, guys. Outside of all the fuzzies. So it has a triple A flame maple, I would say, veneer on it. Oh, yeah, look, them pots feel great, guys. Wow. They feel superb. Them are nice pots. Wow. It has the uh, block inlay. Um, looks like they're abalone, but that may be placed in an epoxy resin abalone with epoxy resin they do that a lot 
But it's really nice. What a nice, oh wow, the action's super nice on this. Whoa. I bet that action's 1.52 on that. Looks pretty nice. I mean, I suppose I could get the gauge out and find out. It has a a perloid head stake, uh, headstock uh, inlay on it. With a faili on it. That's just the standard uh, machine heads on it. Has a scoff joint here, so it's a two piece neck. I don't see another one in the heel. Just here, the scoff joint's here. But the body the body is one piece guys. There is no seam in this body. You can look at it for yourself. There is there's no seam in it. So that's one piece of mahogany. Wow. One solid piece right there. I think these have a short, I mean, um, a long neck tenon in them. I'm not sure. Um, I don't feel like taking the pickups out right now. If I go to change it, I'll do another video on that. I have this thing, right? I see guys taking and to check them out, you know, they take the pickups out. Well, here's my thing. When somebody puts this together for the first time, right? And this is how I work. Um, what I do is when I build a guitar, I'll put them in, I'll take them out, and then I take some super glue. And I put it down in there, the holes. And then I let it set up for 24 hours. And then I'll put it back down in there. Because I know how people like to change their pickups. And if you put the super glue down in there, or you could put some epoxy down in there. Just, you'd have to make sure that it's in the threads and it doesn't expand past the threads. It strengthens those holes those for those mounting screws. So that's something for you to think about if you never thought about it. Sometimes they get these a little too close to the inside of where uh, the router had cut it out. So you got to be careful about that. I, mean, I don't know about on this one, but as far as the fit and finish is concerned... They did a they did a nice job. Uh, this is plastic, which is fine. I mean, I've seen Gibsons with plastic ones. Uh, got your strap buttons on there. The neck fit is impeccable. Sometimes when you look, I don't know if you can see this or not, but when you look down in here. Where this neck joint fits, sometimes you can see gaps. Or the finish isn't good. That's not the case on this guitar. It's fit and finish is top notch. The way that each one of the plastics fits in. The plastics. Looks good. Nice and tight and clean. They did a superb job on that. Absolutely. They did a really... Really nice job on them. What a nice looking guitar, guys. You get a nice. Yeah. So. That part is pretty nice. Let me check out the other part. Oh man, I'll tell you what. Probably not in tune. Can I have a pick? Probably not. Can I grab one? Yeah, I got one. Oh, dropping dimes. Almost in tune.
Oh, yeah. They cut the nut nice, too. Yeah, the nuts cut really, really nice. They did a nice job on that. Sometimes, the things that I find on some of the inexpensive guitars is I notice that the nuts ain't cut uh, properly. This one here seems to be fine. Yeah. Don't hear no tinking. So they did a really nice job. I like the inlay. They did a nice job on the headstock inlay. Yeah, it's pretty. The truss rod is underneath here. Well, anybody wants to know. But yeah, what a what a nice looking guitar, huh? Wow. I mean, in today's day and age, and like I was having a conversation with um yeah, let me lift the camera up a little bit. <sighs> See if you guys can get a better view of me. All right. One thing that I notice on a lot of these inexpensive guitars, I'm not going to say cheap. Uh, uh, I think that that's... That's not right. Now, these are probably, they look like medium tall um, frets. They're all rounded well. They look really nice. They're not gritty. Uh, they could use a little polishing, but outside of that, the binding work looks really good. Very nice, very clean. Um, I only see one issue, which I'll show you here in a second. Outside of that, I really can't fault it any. Um, there's a little stain bleed in here, and sometimes that happens. Uh, right in this bout, you can see a little stain bleed. I'll show you guys, which really ain't no big deal. It's just being freaking nitpicky, but um, it's right in that bout right there. And then over here, I'll show you another little thing. Um, right here on the neck. There's a little dimple right there where they didn't where, when they put the final coat over it it must have bubbled right there which a little sandpaper and you can fix that but for the price i paid for it which i will tell you here um you can't go wrong i mean it looks really good I don't see any other major issues. No. Nope. The uh, the maple fretboard looks really nice. I like the way they did they use the maple on this. It's kind of unique. Uh, most of my LPs they either have ebony or rosewood. So, to have the maple is kind of something different, you know. Um, and it looks like it might be roasted. I'm not sure. But they did a really nice job on it. Oh, yeah, she's way out of tune. I don't know where my tuners are at. Probably upstairs. Yeah, 
Yeah, she's way out. Anyway, it feels good. I don't feel any shot in this, see? None. It did a really good job all the way up, all the way to the bout. I mean, it. look, guys. Um, for the price that I paid, which is, uh, I think I paid uh, $212 with shipping for this guitar. Now, that's actually about $25 or so cheaper than I pay for my, uh, well, a couple of my Fireflies, not all my Fireflies. Um, so, do I think it looks good? Yeah. Uh, I might have a little deeper dive later on, but... Um, I've definitely made a mess in my basement. I gotta click clean that up. But do I think the guitar is a good guitar? Yeah, I do. Uh, from the craftsmanship point of view, um, when I view a guitar, I could tell you that if you're purchasing all of these parts separately, at a minimum you're going to be two hundred dollars. That doesn't you know include the labor of assembling it. You know, setting it up on a CNC machine, all the hand sanding, um, final setup work. Uh, there's a lot of man hours. And I don't care if it's in China, Indonesia, America, uh, Japan, uh, Mexico. I mean, somebody has to work on it, guys. For real. You know that. And I think, you know, <clears throat> I'm not a fanboy of any particular guitar. <laughs> Uh, because I build them and I fixed them for many years. Um, so I try not to get, think that I'm a fanboy of anything. Uh, I really, I prefer, believe it or not, playing my Paul Reed Smith. I really love my Paul Reed Smith guitars. Um, I had the chance to meet Paul. He's a really, you know, he's a luthier's luthier, right? He's a master luthier. And I can appreciate him, and, um, you know, hats off to him. He does a great job. He came from, you know, tough place in his life, and he made something. And uh, to get up there with the, the big boys, that's something different, right? So, uh, but these uh, foreign companies, uh, this company's been around for a while now. So, um for the 200 around the 200 dollar price mark yeah this guy's got it going on this might be an option for you it has a different look right um with the um abalone i think these are uh, abalone encased in uh an epoxy resin that's what it looks like to me prep job's good binding job's good um the top looks great i mean i'm not sure how thick that is but I think it looks good. Uh, the back and sides look good. It's a one-piece body, which is a rarity. And I mean, I'm I, I'm telling you, it's a one-piece body on this one. I can't say that all of them are going to be that way. The grains look good. Um, the fit and finishes, you know, hey, what can I say? <coughs> Anybody has a problem with uh, the fit and finish on this, uh, they need to get into something else besides guitar collecting because this is a nice looking guitar. Now, how do the pickup sound? Well, I don't know. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why I say that. I have several different pickups. I have Johnsons and Peavies and Bosses and Fenders and Marshalls and Friedmans and whatever else's, right? So every one of those amplifiers that I play this guitar through is going to sound different, right? And if I have pedals, that's going to make it sound different. So sometimes, you know, if it's a little too muddy, uh, maybe you want to uh, change your potentiometers and change the ohm, right? So you want to, if you're uh, too tinny, then maybe you want to, you know, darken it up. If you're too dark, maybe you want to go a little brighter. And you could do that with potentiometers, guys. Now. That's for that kind of uh, sound. 
it will not change harmonics, right? So if you're having microphonics, that means they're not potted right, right? Or they're not grounded right. There's a lot of things that can lead to it, but the, the biggest thing is the potting of the pickups. I don't know. These might be microphonic. Uh, some people like microphonic. Some people don't. I mean, that's just one of those things. So I'm not really going to get into that. I mean, that's a personal preference. What type of pickups you put in it, uh, the type of pots, whether you're using, you know, 10K, 25K, 50K, 150K, 250K, 500K, or 1 meg, or 1,000 um, K. All right? Um, that's really up to you. And if you can get into soldering, or if you have a local tech or a luthier that can put them in for you. But sometimes, if the if it's not the microphonics that's bothering you, right? If it's if it's that microphonic sound that's not bothering you, or if they're not microphonic, but maybe it's just a little too bright, or maybe it's just a little too dark. You can sometimes just change that um, by changing your potentiometers. I don't know if other people out there in YouTube land uh, have told you guys, but I figured I'd bring that up to you. You know, sometimes you can do that. And it's a lot cheaper, you know, to change your pots sometimes than it is to, you know, change your pickups. So, because you could change your pickups and you can still have that same issue because your potentiometers are causing that darkness or brightness in your guitar. So that's something for you to think about. Um when purchasing a guitar and wanting to do some upgrades. As far as the other things are concerned about this particular guitar, it's got a couple of things, but nothing that I'll cry over. You know, if I was, if I was the guy that built this guitar, right, I would have made sure to relook over those couple little spots. Now, here's the thing: if you've never scraped binding. It's an art, right? Scraping binding is an art. Any luthier will tell you that, right? You can get very nervous scraping binding. Because if you scrape too much in one area, it doesn't look right. It sends the profile off on your guitar. So you got to be very careful. But as far as the profile is concerned about the scraping of this binding, it looks okay. It's just a couple, you know, a little darker in some spots. And that could just be, uh, you know, the poly uh, coating that they put on it. Maybe it gets darker in some spots, you know. Um, I mean, I'm not going to knock the guys for that because it can happen. I've had it happen to me. So, you know, um, I'd be, you know, coffee calling the kettle black if uh, that was the case. So, you know, but as far as a $200 concern, I don't have any concerns with it. I think it's well worth it. I think that this guitar is well worth um, anywhere from $180 to $250. Plain and simple, without even playing it. Just by looking at that neck, how that neck is set up. And it's straight. I mean, it looks great. That neck looks great. Let's see if you guys can see that. But that neck looks really, really good. I mean, they did an excellent job. So, if you're looking, maybe for something different, and uh, you don't see the, uh, you know, Firefly that you like, because I didn't see anything that I wanted when I was out looking to bring something to the channel, because I buy everything. I'm not sponsored by nobody. And if I was sponsored by somebody, I'd tell you. And if that happens one day, I'd like to do some giveaways. You know, because I know there's a lot of people that may watch this that can't afford to have a bunch of guitars. And I get that. And I understand that. And, you know, I'm not trying to be a showboat here. I'm just trying to show you what I picked up, what I get, and um, what you can get, too. As you can see, in my whole room, my room is filled with guitars. There's guitars everywhere. And this is just one of them, guys. <laughs> I have a lot of guitars. I love them. I mean, that's just me. Um, but I think with all my years of experience in building and fixing and collecting, I think that, uh, you know, I'd know a little bit of something about guitars and the build quality. 
and some ethical principles that you need to stand by as a guitar builder. And there are all those principles are in here. You know, I mean, I think it looks great. Um, this is centered. So the top is centered, everything's centered. The neck is straight, the, it's low action. There's resistance when you turn these potentiometers. You can see that by the way I'm turning them on my fingers because I got these old meat hooks. So, uh, and as far as the machine heads are concerned, they're really nice. And uh, the funny thing is, which is strange about this, is generally it will tell you where it's made, right? So you can't see unless you know that's coming from China, right, where this is actually made. Now, the company's been in, like I said, business for a while. So this is some of the new models that they're coming out with. And uh, you can purchase these uh, on eBay. So all you have to do is look for this name on eBay, really. And uh, yeah, talk to the guys. Tell them what you're looking for. If you don't, if you don't see something that um, you like, talk to them. Send them a message. Okay, send them a message. Uh, and before I close. I just want to say this. <laughs> Try to spend a little more time looking for the seam when you're opening up the <laughs> package. Or you're going to have a freaking mess everywhere and your wife is going to rip you a new one. Anyways, guys, this is my little short review. Um, like I said, maybe later on I'll take a look, deeper dive into it. But yeah, it's okay. I mean, I can see little things in it, but it's, you know. Is it worth 200 bucks? All day long. Great looking guitar. I don't have a guitar in my collection that looks like it. I, well, I can't show you them all, but I'll take you down and let you see. So, take you down and give you one little last profile look. So you can get a better look at it. There you go. But I don't have any on my wall, as you can see. That one there is probably close, but it's not got the honey uh, look as this one. So, anyway, I think it looks good. Yeah, I got a few, huh, guys? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have never seen. And this is just some of them. Look at them. I got, I got new ones. Backed up over there. I haven't even looked at. I haven't reviewed yet. I mean, I own all these. I paid for all these. So, <sighs> I got enough to do. I, gotta, yeah. well, I want to show this one here in one of these next videos. I was supposed to do it a couple months ago. I'm sorry. I've been slacking, but it's been cold and my back's been bothering me. And neck's been bothering me and shoulders have been bothering me. You know, it's the way it is when you get old. But I'll get to these, and I'll do some reviews for you. And I'm going to do some amp reviews with them. And what I mean by that is I'd like to take some of these guitars and play them through different amps. So that way you can kind of get a little bit of a different sound. You know, what it's going to sound like through this type of amp. Whether it be a tube amp, um, a hybrid tube amp. Boss Amp, Carvin, PV, Johnson, you know, whatever it may be. Line 6, I have them all. So, well, most of them anyway. To give a kind of a comparison. So, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm not like some of the guys out there. You know, I don't... I don't need to take the measurements and do all that stuff. I don't, I don't believe in all that, right? If I needed to build a guitar, somebody was, you know, buying a guitar for seven thousand dollars or eight thousand dollars and wanted me to build it and take a year, and he needed them specs. Well, he's paying for it, so I would definitely do that. But 
I haven't built, you know, guitars in a couple of years, so uh, there's really no need for me to get into that, but I think by looking at it and my years of experience should be enough to speak for itself. Give you another side view because I don't think I gave you a side view. But look at that. You did a nice job, guys. So if you're in the market for a new guitar or something different in your collection, this may be a company to look at, to explore. I mean, I can tell you right now, this um, laminate, if that is a laminate, I don't know. I mean, it could be just a thin cap. That's nice. I mean, that's really a, that's a really nice top. And if you are to buy that, it's probably going to cost you 40 or 50 bucks. If you've got to buy that, like on eBay or something. So, yeah. Is it worth it? Hands down. Nice looking guitar. Hats off to them guys at uh, the manufacturing company in China. They did a wonderful job on it. Like I said, there's some improvements that need to be made. You know. Like I said, there's a little divot right here. And, um, you know, a couple of little things. But for the money, I got my money's worth. I don't even need to hear it. I don't even care how, how good the pickups sound. Doesn't matter to me. Although it would be nice if they sounded great. I mean, I'm sure that they're sourcing out pretty good stuff for the price. I mean, if you're going to sell it for $200 when there's other companies that sell these for, well, I'm not going to say this. I should say this body style for, for less. You can pick them up for, you know, 100, and, 100 bucks to, you know, 160, 170 bucks, but you still got to pay for shipping. Guys, look, it costs $100 to ship a guitar from China as a single guitar. Anywhere from 100 to $150. Okay? I paid, like I said, you know, under 220 for it with tax and everything. So, you know, I think it was like, 212 something like that i don't know i don't have my receipt on me but yeah wow i mean i don't think it's any lesser quality than the firefly i think it you know now does it look like a firefly no dude does it you know is it as heavy as a firefly that's the thing i think that this probably weighs about anywhere from seven to nine pounds somewhere in there more like the seven pound, seven and a half pounds, somewhere in there. So it's not really that heavy. It really isn't. So they must have really had a long drying span for that, that wood. Uh, the thickness seems to be about the same thickness as a Firefly. So, yeah. Try it out. Try them out. Look it out. I mean, I'm, I mean like I said, I'm the first one uh doing a video on this guitar that i know of and they have different colors they i've seen purples and browns and blacks and i'm sure if you get a hold of them they can make you just about anything you want now you're probably going to ask well how long did it take you well it only took uh i think 10 days 12 days to get it in right straight from shotgun so i was pretty impressed and I like the way they did the headstock. They really didn't copy anybody else. And they're not trying to copy anybody else's name. Right? They got their own name. Their own headstock style. So, you know, hats off to them for not trying to be another Chibson. You know what I mean? And I have a thing about that. I don't mind people building this style. The LP style. I think it's a great style. Right? I don't have a people a problem with people building that style i do have a problem with people putting gibson's name on the headstock i i i just i have this thing with it i i don't own um a chibson per se all the guitars down here they all have their own name they might have a les paul style to them the cutout style you know a uh, single cut style but um they all have their own brand name on it. They're not trying to 
uh, put themselves off to being somebody that they're not. And for that, I take my hat off to them because I really don't believe in that. You know, doesn't make the guitar play any better because it says Gibson on a Chinese made LP. It does not. Gibson's Gibson for a reason, right? And nobody's going to tell me that, you know, their guitar is the same as a Gibson because they're not. Gibson sources their woods out in a specific place, right? That's what they do. Um, they've been doing it for a long, long time. They had, And it's made in America, right? It's made with American hands through a process that's been going on for a long time. Does that mean that every Gibson guitar that I've ever played or uh, I've ever fixed is great? No, I'm not saying that. There's good and bad apples in every kind of guitar brand. I don't care who it is. You know, I, I, I'm just being honest. And some people played my guitars and didn't like them. And that's fine. You know, it's a personal thing. So, but I do have a problem with people taking and putting their name on, you know, Somebody else's name on their guitar that they built because it's not. And there's a lot of appointments that, you know, a lot of professional people over the years, especially like Trogley. Trogley, I think he could spot one from a mile away. <laughs> he's a hot turd, man. I'll tell you, he's something else. I mean, Buckeye boys. Anyway, um, but outside of that, I got to, you know, give my hats off for not doing that. And uh, some of the appointments, like I like that sharp. That sharp point. Now, I do believe ESP has a sharp point on this. I don't have my ESP LTD up on the wall anywhere, I don't think. Uh, yes, I do. Hold on a second. I think it's over here. Yeah. Let's see. Yep. See how that point is? But it's kind of curved off. You see that? Because I know somebody's probably going to say, oh, LTD. Uh this one here is actually made in Vietnam. It's what, probably 10 years old. Anyway, you see how that point is? Well, their point's like that, but the point doesn't go off. It goes up. So that's, that's pretty nice. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop babbling because somebody's going to say, get, get, get. I don't want to hear it, to be honest with you. I've had a heck of a last few days at the doctor's office, and I really don't want to hear it. I just wanted to do a nice review for you guys. I hope that you all appreciate it. And go check these guys out. Look, who knows how long they're going to be around. You know, sometimes they build good guitars and companies, and they don't make enough money, and they go out of business, and then people can't buy them no more. So, you know. Keep that in mind when you're thinking about and pondering about buying a guitar. Because they could be here today and going tomorrow. Alright guys, take care. God bless. This is Pastor Bob. And I'm out of here. See ya.